tonight. I, I was, uh, again, as I was studying this, I, I asked God where to stop and start on this. I felt very strongly. Personally, I, I, would, I would have thought maybe I would have done shaken first and then stirred, but the Lord really wanted me to, uh, to speak some of that into hopefully some young person's life. And so I want to talk about shaking. Uh, some of us get kind of the idea of shaking as maybe this. Let that sink in for a second. That, uh, that we, we, God wants, <laughs> we, we think God wants us to, <laughs> and then take the drink. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that's really what God is trying to teach us, but it was a cute thing when I was looking up some images. And, uh, you know, I, I, again, I want to take away from this, this thing that just coming in and feeling the presence of God isn't always a shaking or a stirring. And God's here when three or people are gathered together. That, that's his word. But there's, just, there's some times God wants to shake and stir us to a level that changes us, that, want, that wants to do something different with us. And some of those shakings and stirrings go more than just on the surface stuff. It's the air conditioning. Uh, it's because I'm so hot. <laughs> I set off the air conditioning. And I'm so full of myself. It's not. Uh, I blame my mom for that one. She used to sit me in front of a mirror and tell me how beautiful I was. So God's working on me. I stand in front of the mirror and realize not how beautiful I am anymore. Or at least I thought I was. Luke 21, verses 20, verses 25 through 28. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring. Men's heart will fail them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And when, and when shall they see the Son of God coming in a cloud with power and great glory? And, these, and when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh shaken i god began to deal with me on this lesson uh, a while ago just even on the thoughts of it and within the last few even days even in the last few weeks what a shaking has been happening in this world um just across the whole world uh, you take what's happened in London on the, the London Bridge um, you take what's happened um, over in um, in Manchester when they had the bombing and just today uh, Isis has struck at Iran in Iran which is amazing and disconcerting all at the same time. Uh, things are being shaken. And this world is feeling the shaking. And people are being shaken. But I want to I wanna show you something in the Word of God that just begins to, to tell me. And the reason why I started with stirred, and I, I don't really want to go into shaking with our young people around, because I don't believe that fear should be the motivation for living for God. Okay? That's just my personal opinion. I don't think we need to motivate our children with fear. I will motivate my children with fear when it is their lives are in danger of 
getting hit by a car or something like that. I'll use that, but at its only limited factor. My my children and anybody learning learns from the the fact that they it's lived before them better than they learn from the fact of something being told to them or being made fearful to do so. And so I wasn't trying to scare our kids. I wanted them to understand that there there's some things that they can do, but I, I want to us to understand that the shaking isn't meant to be a fear factor. It's just meant for us to open our eyes. And I highlighted, and I'm just going to show you the verses again. I highlighted in red because when you go back to the King James Version, who's speaking here? This is Jesus speaking. This is not a disciple. This is not. This is coming directly from the Lord. And so what the Lord is trying to say to us in, in these verses is, hey, Pay attention to what's going around, around, on around you. Pay attention to what's happening. I heard uh, on the news, and I forgive me, I haven't done and gone back on this, but the, uh, a fairly credible source on this said that in Ontario, Canada, they have passed a law this week that if your child thinks of themselves as transgender, and wants to express that transgender belief, you, if you tell them no, it is illegal. If you say your little boy wants to get dressed in a dress to go to school and you tell them no, it is legal in Canada. Not Canada, and not the whole country, I'm sorry, just in the province of Ontario. It's illegal. I, this, my things are 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 happening at a clip so much quicker than we can ever understand. I, th I truly believe that the that this 24-hour media cycle has deadened us a little bit to the amount of prophetic things that are happening now. Things are being shaken on a regular basis. Uh, we just don't we don't see how our Christian brothers and sisters across this world are being attacked and being persecuted for their beliefs at a level that is so much higher than, than probably any other period of time and doing it with sanctioned um, support of governments and, and, and of other entities that have supported them. I, I, this this whole thing with Kathy Griffin, I I don't I don't want to even go into it, but my word, what what the level of sin that's just and and of uh, I don't know outright I don't even know how to call it I I I, it, I don't even know if there's even a good word to come that comes to mind, but this just this 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 understanding that we can sin so openly and expect and when criticized on what she did she and other media outlets criticized those who were criticizing her uh, <laughs> i won't go okay i, I don't get this it, it's hard for me and uh, trust me i'm not i'm not one that is on the bandwagon that everything to the right is holy and righteous. Okay? I, I'm, I'm not foolish enough. I've met enough politicians in my life and talked to enough of them to know that it sin abounds on both sides of the aisle. Okay? And sometimes right down the middle. And uh, So it, it, it's not that. It's just that Things are happening at a level and a clip that God is just trying to say, hey, wake up. The heavens are shaking. The earth is groaning with things. And 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 I it just it says to me, hang on a minute. Hey, God is wanting to do something. Whether he is coming tomorrow or not, I don't know. I don't want to get into that that type of thing but what i would say is that this is the time and the the time when the church should be at its heightened alert so what happens when there's an a terrorist attack what does 
the government do? Well, the government raises the alert level. They, they, they put them at a higher alert. They put people at a, and said, you know, there's, here's some parameters that you need to be aware of and be careful of. Uh, and you, you should be this and this and that. And, and I don't want to get into all the, the politics and the, the things of that. But suffice to say that, that the, if a government realizes it needs to heighten alerts to wake up its people, how much more than should the church be willing to wake up, shake itself out of sleep, and say, hey, wait a minute, God's got a thing here. And so let's go back to that stirring. And I, I know I talked about it briefly in our first session. But there are some active ingredients that are in our lives. And some things God are, is trying to shake on the outside and he's trying to, to wake up the church. He's trying to get those active ingredients. And I don't know if you can see it all that clearly, but right on the bottle, this is an actual label from a medicine bottle. And the, the, the purpose of the shaking is to get the active ingredient back into the medicine so that the medicine is potent and does that which it's supposed to do. I... I'm concerned in my own self, and I'll have to be very honest, that I have allowed love for things to overtake my love for people. Now, now let me open myself up a little bit here and show you. And this is one of those things. God has been shaking people's lives and things to get them to let go of the love for things. It said this way, people were created to be loved and things were created to be used. But the world, the reason this world is in chaos is because people love things and are using people. How, uh, now, th when I saw that, it, it began to deal with me. How many of you have heard this phrase, Man, you wouldn't believe it. I got hit today. Like, somebody came up and punched you? No. I was in a car. Car had an accident. I was hit. No, you weren't hit. But you're so possessive of your things that now you're saying, I'm hit because you were in a car. Okay? I, I, don't get me wrong. I love technology. But I have had to check myself. When I've, <laughs> I have done it by myself here a little bit, I allowed my boys to have one of my phones, and uh, they dropped it. And, you know, from a, a distance of three to four feet onto a hard surface, things happen. Cracked screens, broken things. And I, I just lost, I almost lost my mind, you know, like, oh my word, what, you, can you believe that this stuff is so expensive? Why are you doing, what's that showing? My, my love is greater for the thing. And God's been having to deal with me. Hey, listen, I, I'm going to have to shake up some of your things so I know that, and you know that, that your love isn't for things. That your love is for me. Your love is devoted to me and is not devoted to things. God may have to do some of these things to shake us up, to show us, hey, look, at man, the, these things shouldn't be as important to you as they are. Uh, and I'll, it was reiterated, I was watching a, another preaching video and uh, this gentleman was talking about his sons. Uh, how many of you have tried to wrangle the children for a photo? Yeah. Been there, done that. Like I believe in duct tape more now than ever before. So just so that we could get them in the picture. 
But he was at a photographer's. Uh, the photographer was there taking pictures of his family, and, and they were trying to wrangle the, the, the three little ones together to get the picture. And, and Dad was about ready to pull his, his hair out, and, and uh, he turned back around, and now the three little ones are all sitting down, and they're just quiet, calm. Like, what in the world? And they go over, and they, the photographer's showing them the pictures in the camera. The kids are touching it, and they're, ooh, ah, ooh, you know. And uh, uh, the dad looked down, and he goes, like, <laughs> uh, can we not let them play with that? <laughs> That's like a $3,000 camera. And the lady looks up, she goes, it's just a camera. It's all right. It's just a camera. Don't worry about it. And what he found out later is that same young lady who did the photograph had taken a trip over to a foreign country. And, and in that trip, she, um, she had a similar situation when she was taking some pictures of the children there. And uh, the guide that was with him, or the, the chaperone of the group, she was letting the kids look at the picture because uh, for many of them, it was the first time they'd ever seen a camera and they'd ever seen anything like that. And uh, as they, she was t showing them around, the guy's like, that's an ex and she just said, it's all right, it's, it's just a camera. It's, it's, it's a thing. Don't worry about it. It's just a camera. It's just an iPad. It's just a phone. And I get they cost us money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not un, I don't believe I'm going to give Eli keys to my car because it's just a thing. That's a foolish thing to do. But I, I got to be careful that those things, and, and when God starts shaking those things, that, that my reaction shouldn't be, God, wait, 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 wait you're messing with my stuff. I, I, I'm preaching to myself more than probably anybody in here. Hey, be careful that when those shakings come that we're not trying to grab onto those things. And we're trying to hold on to those things. And we're, we're trying to rescue those things. Now, I, I've watched too many lives be destroyed because they were worried about their things and not the things of God. You know, I, I've seen people lose their way with God. And, and I'm, not, I'm not bashing anybody for working or doing the things that they need to do to provide. But I've watched too many people have such a love for things that they'll work insane amount of hours and neglect the house of God and neglect the things of God to reach those things and lose their walk with God. And, and uh, you know, and I've watched God go in and try to shake up their things and try to free them from their things to bring them back. You know, I, I've, you know, many times I've had that, that yearning to, to, uh, to get items in my life. I, I, I remember, man, I had a... I wanted the biggest, baddest boombox. Like, I wanted the 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 10-inch woofers on either side of my wall. I wanted my parents to feel the the music. And it had the five-disc CD changer in it, and it had the dual deck players, and and it was had the remote so I could lay in bed and didn't have to get up, and I could just click and change it. I wanted that. I wanted that so badly. And I remember that saving every dollar I could to get that, that, that thing. And I remember just wanting to do it so badly that I was, I was neglecting other things in my life, like tithing and like giving like I needed to do. And in my pursuit of that as a young person, I remember I was in literally, it was, I was... You know, I literally spent this, I think cost me, I, I want to say it was like almost $300, stupid radio. And uh, I, as I was, I, after I remember getting, I was so excited, and, 
uh, I was driving my car and, and I hit a small patch of ice. And I, I ran into the side of this, I don't know, curve, and it just, it ripped out the whole like bottom of my car and radiator dropped and, and that. And I thought, oh man, I don't know how, you know, how I'm gonna pay for this and all that. And my mom in her infinite wisdom said, um, why don't you return that? And uh, I had to return it to pay for the car. But do you know what? I went back and did the math. Not only did I had to return it, but the, what that car cost me was also the tithe I had held back. God was going to get my tithe. God was trying to teach me something. I, I had to let go of the things that were so easily besetting me. And those things, and, and my love for those things had, had crept in and had destroyed my love for the things of God. Uh, there wasn't a lack of training. There wasn't a lack of understanding. There was a lack of love. And the only way God could get me loose of those things was to shake my life, to shake me free of that stuff that would have so easily gripped my heart. But here's the last, not the last thing, but one of the things that I really wanted to point out. Well, let's, let's read here. Acts chapter 4, verses 31 through verse 33. Acts chapter 4, verses 31 through 33. And when they had assembled together, and the place was shaken where they were assembled, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak, and began, they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were with one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that ought, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. You catch that? They understood what God was doing. That shaking, that Holy Ghost influence began to release them of their things and the ownership that they thought they had. But all things were common to them. And I, I, I want to point this out. This is not a thing for socialism, okay? A lot of people point at this verse and say that it's, it's a socialist idea. No, it is not. It's the concept that they had. That no matter the $10,000 item or the fourth, it's all common. There, it was. It had. They. They lost. It lost its value because their value wasn't in the things anymore. Their value was in what God was doing, and from that shaking, then, with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection, and great grace came upon all. When we allow God to shake out the stuff and we lose the value of the dollar and the, and the, the power of the almighty dollar, then we understand that. God, and trust me, I get we live in a society where we have to deal with money. I deal with it all the time. I get that. I'm not talking against that. What I am saying is that you have to understand that we serve a God who, what's $10 to him versus $10 million? It doesn't matter to him. That it's, uh, I, I, and I personally believe that God doesn't bless us. And, uh, I personally believe God has not blessed me with a million dollars because I would value it higher than I would him. And that's just my, that's my personal opinion why God won't, wouldn't let me probably, because I wouldn't value, it, it would consume me to a point that I would turn my value to the million dollars versus what he would want me to do. And I, I you know, I've thought of it before, hey, God, if you gave me a million dollars, I could quit my job and I could work for the church full time and, and I would do this and I'd do that. And, and then I have to look at myself and say, really, would you? Would you really? 
Would you really do those things that you say you would do? Is that really in your heart? And I have to ask God, God, is there that thing, is it, have I shaken up? And, and then I have to wonder when, when God blesses me with an extra bonus or that, when my first thoughts are, oh man, I can finally buy that thing I wanted. And not saying, hey God, what did you bless me for? Was it for me to bless your kingdom further? Was it for me to go further in this? Or was it, was it to bless me to get the thing that I'd like? But if my first reaction is, oh, I'm going to go spend all the money I have on me and not look at what God would have me to do with it, then I have to wonder what he would do in my life. But why is this so important? Why is the stirring and the shaking? And we've, we've touched on it several times, but w what are we doing? What, what is this? What, what are we talking about really when we look at all of this? And it, it probably boils down to this verse the best. Oh, I, maybe I didn't put the verse in there. No, oh, I didn't. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, and I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm, for some reason, I had to slide the slide in here. Oh, there it is. Just was on the wrong one. Seeing then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Therefore, be not unwise but understanding that the will of God is. All the shaking, all the stirring that we've talked about is for us to remember that we are living in evil days. That we are to take what is the most precious commodity that we have, which is time. See, for all of us, we all have the same amount of time. That's common amongst all of us. We all get 24 hours in a day, and however long God calls us to be, there's no difference. There, the time that we are given isn't changed. We can't buy more time. We can't sell time. We can't... And so... Everything around us is being shaken and stirred so that we would get back to the thought, I have to redeem my time. I've got to do the best I can to redeem my time. So when I look at what I do, it should be within the, am I wasting my time or am I using my time wisely to serve his kingdom? Because that's really what it boils down to. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be. And so I've watched God in the last, especially in the last few years, shake so many things in our lives. And has shaken up so many things to get us to wake up to that the time is coming near. And we've got to redeem every minute, every hour. I... I God has really dealt with, personally dealt with me about what I'm watching, what I'm in, investing my time in, what I'm investing my efforts into. Am I investing in, in things that will bring him glory and his kingdom glory, or are they things that will just appease me in my flesh? And I have to, in the light of Scripture, and what has been happening in our world, I have to know that time is, is, is being cut shorter every moment. So the more that, that we see that, then the more valuable time becomes. And the more valuable time becomes, then the more I need to redeem it for his purposes. Okay, here, let me... Put it this way, and I'll try to end on this note. 
How many of you have bought bonds? Bought a bond for a child, you know, or a college bond or everything. What makes those bonds more valuable? Time. Time. The longer you allow that to mature, the more valuable that bond becomes. Let's take it to personal. The longer we allow our, the bond of Christ to grow in our lives, the more time we invest in it, the more sure we become in him, the greater the value. The greater the value. 8.45 on the dot. Bam. I redeemed seconds. Lord Jesus, would you help us to be shaken and stirred in a way that doesn't just bring fear into our lives, but help us to understand how you were working and how you were doing, God. And Lord, that you have a time. Lord, I need this more than anybody. God, I can feel a beating in my heart right now, Lord, that says, hey, you, you've got some things to work on. Lord, I know, Lord, inside me is some things I've got to deal with. I've got to redeem my time. Lord, the time that you have given me, God, not just the time I think I have, but the time that you have given me through your grace, Lord, to redeem it for your purposes and your plans. And God, help me not to be so tied up with my things. God, if there needs to be a shaking, and Lord, I know what I'm asking, but if there needs to be a shaking, would you shake me free of those things, God, that so easily, so easily could set me off course and let me miss the mark of what your will would be for my life. Your will is the most important. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Go in his grace, and then we will, uh, if you wouldn't mind, if we would remember our quiz team, they will be heading, uh, our junior quiz team is heading out um, on Saturday morning to uh, Grand Rapids. <laughs> I knew it was state finals. Just couldn't come up with a place. Um, let's pray for them that God would just be with them. And that if you would do that for this uh, this weekend, uh, God. Thank and we'll look forward to seeing everybody back here on Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.